Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure diorama review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane Batman Classic TV Series 1966 Adam West TV show Batcave. This is a Target exclusive. I've actually had this thing for a very long time. When this first came out, I was pretty excited about it, but then I read reports and saw photos that the thing is underscaled for the figures and far too small. And that really kind of turned me off of opening this thing. But you know what? I should be my own judge if it's good or not. I'm going to open this thing up today, assemble it, and show it with a bunch of different Batman figures. So you can be the judge, and so can I. So let's go check it. look at the packaging. As you can see the top, DC, Batman, Classic TV Series, ages 12+, plus, Batcave. Here it is in the package. Looks like we have a bunch of cave walls, the reactor in the background, a bunch of different bat computers. The top, Batman Classic TV Series by McFarlane Toys. One side, you can see Batman staying next to the bat computer. Other side, simply shows some of the cave. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, you can see it says it's 24 inches wide. Here's the computer. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Bunch of other computers here, McFarland toys. So, like I said, I saw pictures, and this thing is far underscaled, just like the Batmobile. But it doesn't mean it won't be fudgeable with some of the figures, and it doesn't mean it's not going to be a really cool set. There's an upcoming Villains Lair that looks to be packaged similar, and I'm really excited for that thing. So, I thought to myself, let's get caught up and assemble this Batcave. So, with no further ado, let's open it up. It should be noted, this thing appears to be selling pretty good. All my local Target stores sold through this thing quite a while ago. It doesn't seem to be available at the Target website or app anymore. So, it may have its flaws, but you don't give a Batcave in the 112 scale too often, even though I feel like this thing is actually a slightly smaller scale. And of course, like always, I did get two of these things, one of which to open and enjoy and the other one to keep unopened in my complete unopened Batman related action figure collection. And here's the entire McFarland 1966 Batman Classic TV Series collection. It's getting to be a pretty cool collection. I do wish the figures were just a little bit taller, but I'm still really pleased with what they're bringing out. The next couple figures are going to be the black and white Batman, the black and white Robin, and then the Villain Slayer playset. And there's a bunch of rumored stuff after that. All right, now that we've got this thing out of the package, here it is with all those accessories laid out. It comes with quite a bit of stuff. I see a whole bunch of different computers. We've got the big reactor in the back, the cave wall, Batman's desk, and even the signature bat poles. Yes, it does have kind of a cheap feel to it, and damn, are all these bat computers small. There's no way I'm going to be able to fudge them in McFarland DC Multiverse figures here. That being said, I'm looking forward to putting these things together, checking it out with a bunch of figures, and with a bunch of vehicles. So let's go ahead and put this thing together, and let's start off by attaching all the permanent pieces. So let's start off with what I would say is the core piece here. This is going to be the main cave wall and background to your diorama. You can see the detail on the cave wall. It looks pretty good. I'm going to give it that, that's for sure. The reactor. It looks old school and cheesy, just like the show. It does have articulation here. These walls are hinged, so there's a ton of different display options. But I think a lot of people are going to want it as wide as possible for your play area. Same time, you can make it a little cozier. Now one interesting thing, it didn't come in the instruction manual, which is probably not going to be a big deal. I'm just looking at the package to figure out what goes where. So let's start off by attaching this little rail here. Here's the railing attached. Boy, is that clearance small. I mean, look at that. It's going to be hard to even fit a 1966 figure there. This reminds me of all those playsets I used to buy. They're for the older 5-inch figures. And I was always really hoping they'd fit in with the 6-inch stuff. And they never really quite did. And now, my ideal scale is 7-inch. And this thing wouldn't even come close to accommodating 6-inch. It even feels too small for 5 inch. Now we'll attach this ladder. And I also wanted to point out, 
These accessories, they're very bendable. You really don't need to worry about breaking or snapping them. I used to be very displeased how Mike McFarlane makes their accessories, their swords, knives, very gummy and rubbery. But I've come to appreciate it as I used to be really tired of gluing all my old accessories when they would break. Here's the ladder attached. Let's attach a couple of these railing pieces to the top. This one here has a warning. Keep off. Atomic pile. I remember that first episode when that go-go dancer that was dressed as Robin got on top of there. She fell off in the most overdramatic and ridiculous scene you'd ever seen, setting the tone for the entire show. Here's her railing attached. Taking a little more shape. Definitely looking better. Now let's attach the bat poles. Pretty basic. Just a yellow stick here. It's got a couple little bases there. Once you put the bat pole into the base, they can really go anywhere in the diorama. You can put them on this side. You just sort of clip them to the top there. You can put them over here. This side. They really should both go on the same side together next to each other. The poles may have looked kind of flimsy and not attached well in that shot. There are some points where they don't really stay on for good, easy to push off, and there are other points where they lock in pretty tightly. You can put the bat poles on the back of the set or the front. It just depends on your personal preference. I was putting them on the back because that's how it looks on the package. It also came with this circle cardboard piece here. This should be the rotating platform the back cable go on. Now you might think, really? A cardboard piece for the bottom of the back cave? I mean, yeah, think about it. This thing was $30. In my opinion, it is a very, very fair price for this thing. I wish it was a little bigger and cost $50, but I don't make the rules. Then we have this large computer. You can see it's got these stickers on there, all kind of old school knobs and dials. It's got this piece at the top. We've got another computer, kind of similar. It looks like it would fit right into that one. That's how it came. And we have this other piece here. U.S. and Canada crime photo file. International crime photo file. Some of his crime files. It's not very deep, though. And it came with two sets of these computers. This piece is a little bit different. This is the Batcave's memory bank old school retro. I put all these computer accessories into the places it showed on the package. I'm assembling my back cave like that for now. You can see a ton of large oversized computers and then we have his files gonna start an area of his work. Now we have these next four pieces. Another smaller little computer thing. Most of these things are hollow. But they're going to look good for at least one angle. Then we have what looks like Batman's desk. More computer stuff up top. Another little computer station. And then navigational aid. Maybe this will remote control the Batmobile. Here's a Batcave. Starting to take some shape here. Looking very familiar from the show. Now I wanted to look at the infamous back computer. As you suspected, another old school retro computer. Bat computer. And here is a prime example of why I have a huge problem with this diorama. I guess this thing would be called more so a playset. It's just so goddamn small. Look at this freaking back computer next to the one by Mattel. And these are both six inch scale. The Mattel might be less than a quarter inch or so taller than McFarlane, but come on, this back computer is more than twice the size. It would definitely be too large for McFarlane figures, and it's probably too large for Mattel figures, but my god, come on. Look at that. But you know what? That's just not good enough. We have to add in the Batmobile. If you have this diorama, 
It is not complete unless you have the McFarlane 1966 Batmobile to go along with it. Here it is with the Batmobile, the Bat Computer, the Bat Cave, the Bat Poles, all that good stuff. Ah, and we gotta add in the Bat Cycle too. Bat Cycle with a sidecar screams out of West Batman. Looking at all this display here, it makes me think there's hope for a Bat Boat and a Bat Copter in the future of this line. Fingers crossed. Now let's check out the measurements of this diorama, in case you want to know if you have the space to accommodate it. And one cool thing about this, you can fold it up and put it back to the box with fair ease. So right now, it's kind of not fully upstretched, as far as how wide it is like this, about 22 inches wide. As far as how tall it is, about 10, 10 and a half inches tall. As far as how far back it goes, the actual plastic part, I don't know, about 7 inches when it's like this. And the entire thing, a good 20 inches out to the computers here, if you want to do it the way they have in the package. And if you stretch this thing out as far as it'll go, the package boasts 24 inches wide. When you have it this far, it goes about 28 inches wide. It's just not necessarily intended to be outstretched like this. This is more so how it's intended to be displayed. Now I wanted to look at the action features. There are no actual functioning pieces on here. But of course you've got the figures, then go up and down the bat pole, up in a ladder, stand on the platform above or below, use the bat computers, and ride the vehicles. Now let's put some figures in this thing. Here's the McFarland, Batman and Robin in this bat cave. They look really good together. Batcave has kind of a cheaper look than the figures. It's all very retro, but the scaling is just not in line with the figures. It looks to be more of a 4 inch scale than 6 inch scale playset. Here are the Mattel 1966 figures in this diorama. Batman, Batgirl, Robin. They're pretty much the same size as McFarland stuff, maybe just a hair taller. They look cool with this background, but the same scaling issues apply. Here are the McFarland villains in this diorama. I cannot wait to get the villains layer. I'm sure it's also going to be too small, but it just looks so damn cool. Looking at these villains in this Batcave, I can just hear the Joker and the Riddler laughing. And here are the Mattel villains in this diorama. They also look pretty cool. Definitely say McFarland figures fit a little bit better in style-wise. I remember in the film, the Penguin actually snuck into the Batcave. Since I would prefer to use as many McFarland figures with this McFarland diorama as I can, I would say your best bet would be to have your McFarland Batman and Robin and your Mattel Batgirl. McFarland has flat out said they are not going to be making Batgirl as they were unable to acquire Yvonne Craig's likeness. There might be hope for the future as Mattel made the figure at one time, so it has and potentially can be done. You could add in the Mattel DC Multiverse Alan Napier Alfred, but he is just way too tall next to these figures. Look at all four of these figures. These are all technically six inch scale figures. Companies have a wide berth on what they think 112 scale means. This Alfred looks great, but you're gonna have to really work on some camera angles to make him work with these figures. Here's Batman and Robin using a couple of the various back computers. This thing just should be taller. The keyboard is down here. His hand should comfortably be hitting the keyboard a little higher. And look at this thing. It is just way too short. It is not scaled up for these figures, and that is just crazy. Here's Batman and Robin as they just came down the bat poles. This is about the most vanilla pose you can get out of them. If you try to have their leg up like they're coming down, it just doesn't work. Here's Batman and Robin on the top platform. Keep off that thing. You might fall into the atomic radioactive power source. There's no top of the bat cave, so the clearance is just fine. And there's enough room on the platform for them to stand there and not look bad. Gonna have to go out on a limb here and say it's not intended for figures to actually walk on this platform. If it is, they butcher this on execution. 
gonna have to just assume the fence to keep you away from that thing. There is no clearance for the figures. And honestly, you couldn't even move him through the side, it's just too tight. Here's Batman, climbing the ladder to the atomic reactor. The ladder, once again, just like everything else here, just far too small for the figures. It's a good background piece, but it is not 112 scale. Here's the McFarlane Batman and Robin in the Batmobile. The Batmobile is also too small for the figures. I mean, look at these guys. They are sticking out, out of the car way too much. Their heads should be under the windshield or the dome here. And even though the Batmobile is underscaled, it's not nearly as underscaled as the Batcave is compared to the figures. Here's Batman and Robin in the Batcycle. The Batcycle actually seems scaled pretty well with the figures. A little hard to get Batman on there with the T crotch style hips. And Robin, he has to completely crouch so low it looks ridiculous and his head is looking straight down. This diorama would have fit in with your old Kenner superpowers, the newer McFarland superpowers, old school toy biz stuff, way better than the six inch McFarland 1966 figures. And that is truly a shame. It actually looks really cool with these type of figures. Here it is with some other 4-inch scale figures, Justice League Unlimited, Brave and the Bold, and Batman the Animated Series, and here with some slightly larger 5-inch figures from Batman Begins and the Batman cartoon. Hell, I even think this diorama would work with some 3.75-inch figures. Here are some Mattel figures from Batman Unlimited, Arkham City, and the Dark Knight. They're really little, too small for this Batcave, but honestly, look at him next to that back computer. It actually seems like they're right in line with the height of these back computers. At least that small kind like that. Okay, maybe a little undersized, but not by much. Especially when you look at this thing next to the figure it's actually supposed to go with. I mean, look at this. It's so badly done. Overall, I'm going to say this Batcave is a failure. It does look cool. The colors, a little bit too cartoony, even for the show. But my god, this thing is just way too small. It is not 112 scale. I don't see how it is part of the same line as McFarlane 1966 figures. What the hell? It's a nice background piece. Texturing is good. The accessories are plentiful. But they're so damn small. I do not understand how this got made like this. The Bat Cycle seems to be in scale with the figures. The Batmobile seems to be underscaled. And the Batcave seems to be severely underscaled. I do not get it. That being said, if I go back in time, guess I still would have bought this thing. But it's not going to be worthy to go into my permanent Batcave setup. I'll give you a little glimpse of that right now. This is my entire Batcave and Wayne Manor setup. Starts off with this Power Attack Batcave. It's got a ramp and an entryway for a vehicle. And you can see there's a lot more inside. Starts off with these two Mattel, Justice League, and Batman vs. Superman DC Cinematic Universe Batcaves. They're massive, they are very tall. Inside here, you can see some of his trophies at the bottom. We've got the dinosaur, the coin, the Joker card. This epic Kenner Batman Forever Batcave. This thing is absolutely huge. Some various vehicles in the background here. More Batmobiles for him to drive. Of course, the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series Batcave. Mattel Movie Masters Batman suit display. We've got a TARDIS down there. It's got some nice platforms, similar to a Batcave. Bunch of armored bat suits. The Flying Fox. The Batwing wall mounted. Hot Toys the Bat. A couple trophies here Two Face Coin, a Joker gun, the Robin suit. Batman of the Batcave with Alfred. 
using the extreme sets on the shelf here working out very nicely you can see some of his chemistry lab workshop Alfred the computer then moving up to the Wayne Manor a staircase here Alfred touching with the piano dining hall with the portrait of his parents and here's Alfred's kitchen then above the next shelf Alfred reading book having some wine Wayne Manor library here's Master Damien Bruce and Alfred at the fireplace Alfred stoking the fire and above that I have a whole bunch of different Batman related vehicles my bat cave setup so like I said this thing is cool for what it is but it's just so damn small it does not work properly with the McFarland figures none of it does if I were to rate this thing I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 10 as a McFarland classic Batman 1966 TV series diorama playset if this was for the superpowers figures, that'd be a whole nother ball game there. But I'm damn near offended that McFarland would release something so small as part of the same line. It just doesn't make sense. I get it, they're trying to keep costs down, keep a good value. I would happily have paid more for this thing to be bigger. I personally would recommend against it if you want it with your McFarland figures. Take away all the computer pieces, just use the back walls, and it's a nice background piece, but absolutely no functionality as a playset for your figures, and the scaling is horribly off. It is actually a fantastic value for $30. I am not going to argue that point. Maybe Target insisted to keep it at a certain price point. I don't know. But it should not be part of the same line as the figures. It really concerns me about the upcoming Villains Lair. I have a feeling it's going to have the exact same problems. Be ridiculously underscaled. Really hope I'm sitting here doing a review in another month or so, eating my words. But I fear that will not be the case. And that set looks just so cool. This set looks cool too, but it's filling with disappointment. So this is D Hunter. Thank guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.